following video is not made for kids. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello to my subscribers, this is the Tia Thangy coming to you with my next Transformers review. Um, after my previous two reviews with um, Legacy Evolution Medics and Legacy United Animated Optimus Prime, uh, the new filming station I was doing at, or the new location I was doing at, it was proving more difficult and challenging than it was worth. So I decided to present you guys with my next review you here at the place where I've been doing most of my reviews in the past. And tonight we're going to be taking a look at Transformers Legacy United Core Class Energon Megatron. So this figure is one that a lot of Transformers fans and collectors, especially of the Unicron Trilogy, have been waiting for with anticipation because this figure is the first ever action figure, not just in the Legacy line, but in the entire Transformers Generations line to be I mean, to be a figure based on a character from the Transformers Energon series that was released way back in 2004 for the 20th anniversary of the Transformers franchise. And it amazes me that it's been 20 years since then and we're now looking at the 40th anniversary of the Transformers franchise. So Unicron Trilogy fans are hopeful, myself included, that uh, Core Class Legacy United Energon Megatron, it'll open the floodgates for other characters from Transformers Energon being given modern day action figures figures, but some Transformers fans and collectors think it's a starting figure that is one that could have been done in a different size class. I have class. The uh, original Transformers Energon Megatron figure, which I have in my Transformers collection, unfortunately it's on a shelf surrounded by a bunch of other Transformers figures that I didn't want to um, have to take apart off the shelf and remove to get to. But the original Energon Megatron figure was the same size as a modern Commander class Transformers figure. It rivals Earthrise Skylinks, Skylinks, and a Legacy e e e Year One, uh, Men the Menasaur Combiner figure in terms of overall size. So Energon Megatron is one of the largest Megatron figures that was released throughout the 2000s, and that figure has the honor of being the first ever Megatron figure that I added to my Transformers collection. So, but the point is, and the point I'm trying to get at is, Energon Megatron was originally such a massive figure, a lot of Transformers fans and collectors are kind of disappointed that the first uh, ever generation style figure based on the Energon version of Megatron, it was released in the core class size instead of either commander class size or even leader class size, since those two size classes are a size appropriate version of this ver of Energon Megatron. So coming out, so here on the top of the box, we got some artwork of Megatron in his alt mode of a Cybertronian jet. You got him in his robot mode there in the Legacy United box. You on this side of the box, you got the poster image for the Legacy United line, half of it at least. And then on this side, you got the same artwork of Energon Megatron in his jet mode. So without further delay, let's get him unboxed and take a close look at at him in his via, in his robot mode. Alright, so here is Core Class Legacy United Energon Megatron on Transformer into his robot mode, and he is um, really impressive for being a Core Class figure. He's somewhat bulky. Uh, here he is, is close up in his robot mode. Uh, there's his Fusion Cannon, and no, your eyes are not deceiving you. Energon Megatron's Fusion Cannon is an entire battle tank with a giant sword sticking out of it. And that was the gimmick with the original Energon Megatron figure is that his uh, fusion cannon was two weapons in one. It was both the cannon, which was an entire tank, and it was a sword on the opposite end. So it's your choice to decide uh, which side of the fusion cannon to have him displayed with. I kind of wish that because it's hollowed out here on the back, the nose cone of his jet mode, which even on the original Energon figure just hung off the back of him as a type of backpack, I wish they would have designed a way for it or this sword to have... Uh, in place, you can kind of um, you can uh, kind of sort of sort of uh, force it in that position, but unfortunately, it doesn't stay on that well. On the original Energon Megatron figure, the sword and the tank were separate we were separate weapons, and the sword would store into a compartment here on Megatron's back. And you plug the tank and then pull it out, pull the sword out, out to get it out of Megatron's backpack. So it was nice, decent weapon storage if you wanted the uh, the tank fusion cannon to just be that and not have the sword attached to it. Attached to it. Unfortunately, un unfortunately, the original Energon Megatron figure, the sword 
couldn't be held by Megatron's hand, so he, unfortunately he wasn't able to have uh, both weapons at the same time. And, but yeah, really nice looking figure. Uh, some um, uh, Transformers fans and collectors who have the original Energon Megatron figure and have, or your, or they've seen photos of the original figure, or they used to have it, have complained about the bright neon green used here on Energon Me Core Class Legacy United Energon Megatron's uh, shoulder cannons and the inside of his wings. On the original figure, they were almost like a uh, like a grass, gr like a clear grass green plastic. And it wasn't even plastic on the wings, they were actually rubber. And it was a gimmick where if you pulled the wings out, then the wings would open up and it would give Megatron an attack mode, mode with additional swords, swords, and so it was a force to be reckoned with. And on the original Energon Megatron figure, his shoulder cannons could uh, fold, fold 90 degrees on a rotation joint and could uh, end up rotating uh, forward, like forward giving him extra firepower. And so here for the new core class, Legacy United version of Energon Megatron. Megatron. His shoulder cannons are just removable, so you fake the gimmick of them rotating down, rotating forward. Forward. I can kind of understand why they did it for the core class size, but I just think think it would have been nice if they would have uh, at least designed a way for them to rotate without having to pop them on and off, off over and over again so many times. Uh, articulation is pretty standard for a core class figure. Heads on a it's on a swivel joint, so it can look left and right, right, but not up and down. The arms can have the potential to spin 360 degrees. The shoulder, oh, there, since it's a ball joint, ball joint, but you do have to move the wings out of the way, a to have clearance for the uh, shoulder cannons if you want to leave those attached. Attached. Uh, no biceps, no bicep joint, but you do have a ball joint in the elbow, so the lower arm can rotate 360 degrees and can bend at the elbow, elbow a little more than 90 degrees. Uh, no waist articulation and ball jointed hips, so the legs can go forward that far. Oh, bleh, my tongue decided to fail me there for a second. Legs can go forward this far, or and they can go, only go back this far. Are, which is um, not much of a difference compared to uh, when they're in the standard forward position. So the backwards leg joint is virtually useless at the hips. Hips. Uh, he does surprisingly have thigh swivels, so you can put him in a sprawl-legged pose if you desire. And of course, he has hinge jo joints in his knees, and the feet can go up and down at the ankle. But those joints are primarily for transformation. So um, it is faithful to the original Energon figure, Megatron figure that was released back in 2004. Having a limited joint articulation, nation. Um, part of it was because of the gimmicks that the designers at Hasbro and Takarotomi were uh, uh, incorporating into the Transformers action figures for the Unicron trilogy, and what that resulted in was the Transformers figures having somewhat limited articulation. So compared to figures that were released in Transformers Beast Wars, Beast Machines, and even Robots in Disguise 2001. The Transformers action figures that came out in the Unicron trilogy, Armada and Energon, they were kind of um, a callback to Transformers Generation 1 action figures in that they had uh, limited articulation compared to the figures that came out in the 1990s. So, so that's uh, it's a bittersweet uh, callback to Generation 1 with these uh, figures having limited articulation. One thing I pers one minor nitpick that I have with Core Class Megatron. On is that I wish they would have done the Decepticon symbols that the original Energon Megatron figure had on the tops of his wings for vehicle mode. I know they end up on the back of him in robot mode, but it was nice having of him seeing seeing Megatron having multiple Decepticon logos around him, not just the one on his robot mode chest. And speaking of his robot mode, for those of you wondering, yes, the original yes, Transformers Energon Megatron was designed to have Generation One Galvatron's body design. I know for the 40, for the 20th anniversary of the trans, ans, uh, Transformers in 2004, Takara Tomy decided to go as a G1 as possible with the overall designs of a majority of the Transformers Energon characters, and some of the characters that were released in Transformers Energon, on uh, with the exception of Optimus Prime and Megatron, some of those characters were ones that hadn't been seen since Transformers Generation One, on, tw on nearly 20 years earlier earlier, such as uh, Inferno, Omega Supreme, Eam, uh, Prowl was one, even though Prowl was the name of a Minicon in Armada, Rodimus, who, is, which was the shortened 
copyrighted name for Rodimus Prime at the time, since Hasbro couldn't also get could neither get registered trademarks for Rodimus Prime or Hot Rod. Uh, there was a uh, Autobot named Landmine in Transformers Energon. There was a uh, Decepticon named Mirage, who was the upgraded version of Tidal Wave, who's being given a Titan class figure later this year. Whether or not we're going to eventually get a leader class figure of Energon Mirage, Decepticon Mirage is uncertain. And Shock Blast, which was the registered trademark name at the time for Shock Wave. Abe, so a lot of the Transformers Energon characters had callbacks to Generation 1, and Takara Tomy and Hasbro decided the best way to have Megatron be a callback to the Generation 1 franchise was for his body design to be based off of Generation 1 Galvatron. So when he did upgrade into Galvatron towards the final, I know, uh, episodes of Transformers Energon, on the last, I want to say, 10 or so episodes, Odes, he, Odes, he, Odes, he just got a new paint job instead of a new body design, and... The Energon version of, of Galvatron was one of the most uh, Generation 1 looking Galvatron on designs lines that is a uh, non-G1 version. version. So I really hope we get Energon Galvatron repainted from this guy. I missed out on the original, en original Energon Galvatron figure. figure. The one time I saw it at a Target store, I didn't have enough money to buy it, and by the time I did have enough money to buy it, Energon Galvatron was gone. And he goes for a ridiculous price on the aftermarket, so... Uh, here's hope it, hoping that we get Energon Galvatron on at least a repaint of this figure in a year, in a year. But I hope that we do eventually get a leader class sized figure of both Energon Megatron and Galvatron because I would buy a leader class sized figure of Energon Galvatron in the Legacy line in a heartbeat. So for some quick size comparisons, uh, here is Ener Transformers Legacy United Core Class Energon Megatron with Transformers Kingdom. Generation 1 slash IDW Megatron, and also with Generation 1 Optimus Prime. Uh, whether or not we're going to get a core class figure of Energon Optimus Prime is uncertain. The Energon version of Optimus Prime, for many Transformers fans and collectors, Energon Optimus Prime is one of the worst designs given to Optimus Prime. I am throughout the entire uh, Transformers franchise, eyes, eyes throughout the last. Um, 40 years of the Transformers uh, franchise, a lot of people say that the Energon version of Optimus Prime is their least favorite version of him. Him. I personally disagree. I think the uh, version of Optimus Prime from Transformers Rescue Bots is uh, not quite as impressive as the Transformers Energon version of Optimus Prime is, but that's just my own personal preference. preference. But if we did get a core class Energon Optimus Prime, I would probably get it and add it just to stand opposite this version of Megatron.